it's the 11th of December 2018. I'm David Griffin. I'm up here at Whitwell and I'm talking to Duncan Forrest, Ian Sadler, Gary Franz, and Craig Sadler. Gents, thanks very much for joining me. We've, we've talked over the last hour or so about the history of the cricket club and some of the famous players and some ground development and about yourselves and your own roles in the club. I'm interested in where cricket goes generally because the impression I'm getting from you is that Whitwell Cricket Club itself is thriving, very strong, got a good youth community coming through it, you've got women's cricket, but where does it go in the next 20 years, where will it be in the next 20 years? Gary, you've had a long association with the league mm. as an official, perhaps you could just tell us about that role, yeah. and then about where you see local cricket going first. Well, the all. secretary's role of the Basketball League was... Uh, an all-encompassing everything revolved around the secretary. Um, but certainly during my tenure, which was over 10 years, there was a dramatic drop in the number of clubs taking part in the league, dramatic drop in the number of players, in the number of youth teams, and generally cricket was declining. And that's was not that clubs folding, Gary? Clubs Altogether, folding, yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. Um, I did an, uh, some kind of analysis over a period of time and certainly in the 1970s and 80s, the Basketball League was almost twice as strong as it is now. And you could write forever about the reasons about all that. As a result of that, there's been a debate in the Basketball League and around Nottinghamshire cricket, even though Derbyshire, sorry, that Whitwell is in Derbyshire. The Basketball League is a Nottinghamshire-based league, with the, with the uh, Nottinghamshire Cricket Board being overarching the whole of the league. Um, and there's been a lot of debate about what can we do to resurrect uh, people's interest in cricket to make sure no more clubs drop out. And yeah, Whitwell Cricket Club is the exception to the rule. It's thriving because of the amount of commitment different people are putting into it. And there's been so many offers put forward at league annual general meetings about below a certain level, only playing 40 overs, uh, bowlers can only bowl a certain number of overs less to make them participate more. Yep. Um, all sorts of fiddling about with the rules and the regulations to try and involve more people with the game. Uh, starting sooner, finishing sooner so that people could finish at, at, at half past six so yep. they can go. All kinds of things to help young people think, oh, cricket might be the game for me. And yet, despite all of that, despite so many changes being put forward, the clubs who have the final vote on it have all voted year after year for generally speaking for it all to remain the same so would you believe that even though the people at the high level the administrators are saying it needs to change this needs to change that needs to change an avalanche of proposed changes the people who are playing the game want it to remain the same it's interesting because it's usually you would expect it to be the other way around certainly in Derbyshire mm. Premier they're going for win-lose next year Yes, th Which is an interesting, because, yes, because the general yes. consensus was that the people running the game, I may be wrong, but it's just the impression I got, would have preferred to stay with draws and winning draws and losing draws, yeah, but yeah. the players were saying we actually want to, to turn yeah. and play for something. I think there, there's um, a general consensus that uh, there is a need to reward people for not necessarily losing. For example, a close game. Uh, the team in the first innings gets 200, the team batting in second gets 198. It's a very close game. They wanted to reward the team that only just lost by still giving them bonus points for playing good positive cricket. Yep. So, you know, rather than just blocking out and then the game being boring and yep. all kinds of things like that. So there's all kinds of different proposals being put to try and make the game more attractive for young people to think, well... I've got to leave the house at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning. I might not get home if I stay for a drink as well until 10 o'clock at night. How is that in this quick, disposable world a good thing for the young people? For our generation, it was fantastic coming from a village. I'll spend all day on Saturday playing cricket. That's fantastic. Take as long as it wants for, for me. But young people don't see it like that, do they? Well, I'm interested, Duncan, because what you're looking after a lot of these young teams. Yeah. So... If they don't want to be there from 10 in the morning till 10 at night, what, what do they want to do instead? Well, there's all the things for them to do now, aren't there? They go skate park and sort of, it's a quick thing for them to play cricket in the midweek at night time because they come, it's a short format of the game and they're gone and they love it. 
But if you try and get them interested in the longer format of the game, they're not as interested. But some presumably do make the transition well, some to weekend. Do, yeah. Yeah, some yeah. do. Yeah, we've got some good young, yeah, young, young creatures. But uh, again, me and Gail talked about the other day. <coughs> you get them to play four to six over cricket, but talent wise, they don't want to play four to six over cricket. They want to play 20 20 cricket in four to six overs. So you get to a stage where some of the games, really, it can be finished by five o'clock because the way they play the game now, more attacking bat batting wise. Uh, and, and sometimes, as I'm saying, 46 overs is it's probably batting 36 overs. And uh, so sometimes the game is, is shortening in that aspect because they want to play 20 20 shots, as I say. They don't want to build anything, they don't want to bat 46 overs. Well, I guess, I mean, I'm sure you can remember, yeah, it's certainly our camp, the, 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 the midweek leagues used to be. 20 over leagues, didn't they? Yeah. Sometimes you used to bowl 15, 8 ball overs and same yeah. thing, wasn't it? Nothing new, is it? So no. it's not really a new concept, no. is it? No. Where do you see, I mean, we've heard very positive things about uh, Whitwell. Do you, do you see that, that positivity continuing, that this, this not quite conveyor belt, but... I do see it continuing, but it's hard work for it to continue mm. because, simple reason, I think if you, you just don't get, if you get 50 kids at under 11 on the field, I see the ratio, you might get four or five of that 50 that go on mm. to play cricket or start with your club or for whatever reason. They get to a certain age and they just drift, seem off. To drift off and it's, it's keeping them when they get to 16. Yeah, 15, 16 year old, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's keeping them. It's, I think that's the crux, keeping them when they get to that. How do you, how do, you do that? I think though, Ian, it's, it's not just based on their ability or their willingness to want to play cricket. They get to 16, 17, there could be a multitude of things. The issue about employment kicks in. Yeah. They're not going to find employment in this village, so they've got to move away to get employment. The opposite sex will always be an attraction. The education with, uh, whether it be college or whether it be a university, university yeah. there's all kinds of social oh, things there is. Mm. pulling people away from local cricket clubs. Yeah. You might have the most exciting young cricketer we've ever had at 16 years of age, then life's reality kicks in. I've got to have a job, I quite like the opposite sex, and I also need to be educated. And they've got to flap the wings and fly away yeah. now. Is it still feasible, though, to, to produce a county cricketer, for example? We talked about in the early interviews, ten Derbyshire county cricketers were born in Whitwell. I think it's still feasible. I think as a club, that's, yeah. that's your, as, as we're sat here now, that's our ambition. There's more to create, opportunities now yeah, to, create for, a good to become a county cricketer because there's trials where as when yeah. we were young and growing up, there was yeah. that opportunity for us to mm. offer a mm. trial every season, say, whereas there is now. I mean, we've sent young lads and girls, obviously, for trials with Derbyshire at different age levels. Unfortunately, they've not quite made it yet, but mm. there's always other opportunities mm. for them as they get older. There, there is some really talented players out there, not just talking about Whitwell, but around about the yeah, area we, we played. And you see youngsters at 20, 21 year old, you think, oh, they're talented, they look like a good player, looks like a bowler. Uh, but the, the, probably their attitude isn't there, that probably should should be. They don't want to develop, they want to say, oh, I'm okay now, I can do this. So they're happy that. playing recreational cricket. They're just happy playing yeah. league cricket. Mm. And, and same as, as Gary's pointed out, sometimes it, they'll say, well, I've got something else better to do. Yeah. Yeah. Which we don't think there's something better to do. But they all think, this, this, I've got something better to do this Saturday, I won't play cricket. So you yeah. get a lot of them playing 10 matches per season. Yeah. You, know, well, you don't get your 18, 19 games a season from a lot of youngsters mm -hmm. now. You'll yeah. probably get 10, 12, 13 games from them. And, uh, and uh, but from a club point of view, we're strong in, in the point that we've got teams out on a Saturday afternoon thinking, how are we going to get a second team out? But again, the, the family part comes into it, as we, we, we like to say, where the, the people put their hand up, mm. some parents will put their hand up, Craig, we'll make one, you know, Gary, I'll make one, Duncan, I'll make one, and we do, and that's why, how we get through, because the enthusiasm there. But um, a lot of it, you can say, there's a lot of talent out there, but I'd, I'd always say they're, they're wasting it a lot of I it. I think it's interesting from a, a, a point of view, I mean, sadly for whatever reason, I'm an umpire now. So I get to listen to all of the club's reasons as to why they've got 10 today, 9 or 8. And unbelievably, this last few years, the number of people that are coming to me as an umpire and saying in the same innings, 
Gary, can you tell me when it gets to six o'clock, please? Because I have to go. And the fielding team in the second innings are then playing with far less really? because they've got other commitments. Yeah. And, and, and so that's an example of how the game's changing. And, and the players that are leaving are good quality amateur cricketers. They're not fill-ins. Yeah. Um, and, and then you say, well, why are you only down to nine today? Well, so-and-so said he's got to go shopping with his girlfriend. And so-and-so says, I'm going to the football. So you've got all kinds of things which they'll play cricket, some people, provided they've got nothing else to do. And I hear that a lot around the entire league. So whatever is happening at mm -hmm. Whitwell to constantly provide 22 players every Saturday is yeah. very good. I think the football issue is, is, is one. Mm. Because for me, I don't think the football season really ever finishes now. It's a tremendous overlap, isn't it? Yeah. Is it big players wanting to play or watch? Or a bit of watch. Both. 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 Yeah, yeah. You know. Just going back to I mean, something sorry. Gary said about, <clears throat> uh, what, it was Gary or Craig about being this the Nottinghamshire connection. But, but you're in Derbyshire. Presumably you are staunchly proud of your Derbyshire yeah. roots. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but was there ever any pull towards an alternate league? Because you've always been since... Yeah. Probably the last, when was it founded? 04, 1904, yeah, did you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. Ever any pull towards mm -hmm. playing in a Derbyshire only league? No. Well, was there, there was a year, I can't remember when it was, but of course the Basel League lost a tremendous amount of Derbyshire clubs. Yes. Because they went to the Derbyshire County League, and the yeah. best of the County League then went to the Premier League, yeah. uh, as you know. Uh, and so, you know, the likes of Chesterfield and on and on it goes all went to Derbyshire. Stavely, yeah. And stayed with Stavely, Clown. All, yes. Mm -hmm. Which left. You know, only the small number of clubs in the Bassett World League. So you've got that anomaly now of six Derbyshire clubs actually under the rules and regulations of the Nottinghamshire Cricket Board, uh, a few in Yorkshire, I think it's only one in Lincolnshire now. Yeah. So, but uh, I mean, I'm not in and around the club now, but I've never known. We're quite fortunate, we're all, because we're near enough in middle are all them teams that we've just talked yes. about. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, the Derbyshire teams are sort of more out of Chesterfield. Way, well, Whitwell would have more of a travelling problem yeah. with you now yeah. to go to a Derbyshire yeah. league than yeah. you do in the Bassett Law League. Yeah. So I think they've stayed Bassett Law, unless I'm wrong, yeah. because it's more local because yeah. of the yeah. geographical position of Whitwell. Yeah. In the county of Derbyshire. And just, we, we talk about player and player retention, but I'm interested in players that have played for you. We touched on, on the fact that Chris Adams and Les Jackson's a young man and, and uh, um, David Adams played. But uh, what sort of players have you had here as professionals and, and what kind of players have you encountered in terms of county players or overseas players? Uh, Is there any that spring to mind? Well, quite a few. Well, <laughs> well, if, if, if the I could first one I can remember actually playing was Graham Frost. Graham Frost, mm. he was Phil Wilkinson, it, Phil Wilkinson, it, it, for Whitwell, for, for, yeah. for Whitwell, yes. yeah, yes. As, as a pro. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, there's been many pros on the opposition. Oh, yeah. oh on the opposition, well, yeah. oh, but for, I'm, I think maybe just for Whitwell. No, no, but either. Oh, all oh, oh, right, yeah. 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 And overseas. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, do, you, do you still have a net? Oh, well, that fellow that played for uh, Milton. Andy Bickle. 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 Uh, play against him, play against oh, like Tony Cliff, Morrington. Right. Uh, so, so what were you playing against? Yeah. Pete, Pete Kirsten. So, what games were these then? Basketball. 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 First thing. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. where were Kirsten? Where was Kirsten? He played at workshop. Right. Tim Robinson at Chesterfield, uh, Tavisal. Yeah. Um, and so we, pl we played against Knotts Colts because Knotts Colts were in the Basketball League. Mm. And so they were kind of an Andy Pick and, and people like Mark Smedley. Uh, right, yeah, the former Knotts captain, captain yeah. yeah. And uh, so through the Knotts side, the, the, the Milnes, David Pine Milnes, House, yeah, David, yeah. Uh, so Andy Peak. Who, who was was what's he? Go, uh, Goldsmith, I can't remember his name, who played at. Uh, Steve Goldsmith? Steve Goldsmith. He played at Cupfield. He played at Cupfield, didn't he? That's another team that in Bassett Law then went back to. Yeah, that's went, went, went from Derbyshire, Bassett Law, then back yeah, into so Derbyshire. Did, yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go then, gents. Mm. Who's, the, who's the quickest bowlers you've had to face during your career? Quickest. Quickest yeah. I've ever faced would be, there's two that come to mind, uh, Andy Bowers mm. at Chesterfield. We interviewed him last week, yes. actually. Somebody well, said he, he had a very, I never saw him play, but he said he had a very um, unassuming run-up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, well, yeah, well, well, yeah well, a then it all went in from there. Very it, small for a basketball. Yeah, yeah well, it was. It was wide as that table. Yeah. Yeah. Shoulders, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and then it was the other yeah, one. Yeah, and the other one was, I can't remember what was his name now. 
Andy Bickle were quick at Milton. Yeah. Andy Bickle were quite shy, weren't they? Picky were shy. Um, if he wanted to be. I played against Gary. Gary I played particularly. Oh, certainly the guy at, mm. at um, Andy Chesley, Andy, Andy, Andy Bowers was, yeah. was the quickest, mainly because I was a kid. Pete, Pete Jack got left arm. Yeah. yeah. He played for Knox Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. And what against, about? I played against Colin Croft. Did you? Mm, at Buxton, yeah. Oh, well, that was an interesting encounter. Very interesting. Did he come round with you, tell you? No, I don't know where he come from, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> would you, you, would, did you wear a helmet? No. Really? Oh, no, never wore one, have you? No. 1977, that was, I think. So no, was at the peak of his powers. Was he putting yeah. it in? or? We were, we were playing with Lancaster Seconds at the really? time. Really? And uh, we were playing a game at Buxton, a three day game. And we arrived in the car park and he was stood there just coming back from injury. So he was playing with Lancaster Seconds at the time, coming back from injury. And that was. Did you get any runs? Not off him, no. <laughs> <laughs> and what about batsmen? Who were the batsmen? I mean, you mentioned Kirsten, who was it? genius. Yeah, that's when yeah. that you encountered down the years. Tim Robinson was one of the best, I think. He yeah, Tim Robinson. Mm. Jeff Miller. Jeff mm. Miller, of course. And these were after they'd finished the county careers, presumably? No, the no. Before. Before. Oh, before. In fact, when... Well, Jeff, Jeff was playing with Chesterfield and Arbyshire. Arbyshire, yeah. yeah. And, <coughs> and Tim, I'm not sure if Tim Robinson were... He was only about 18, 19. About, yeah, about 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 when yeah. he played at uh, uh, Tavisholt, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. And then he went on, of course, to play with Knott's yeah. in England, of course. Yeah. And um, I'd, I'd like to, to conclude really by just asking how the we had the, the pit disputes back in the mm -hmm. one in the nineteen seventy three, the other one eighty forty four. Did that have any impact on on Whitwell as a club being a, a, a team right on the border when we know a lot of the the, the issues around the strike were, were focused on the Knox Dogs? The early strikes didn't. The seventy two ones and that seventy four one didn't. No. Eighty four did. Eighty four one. A little bit. But did. It didn't. Uh, individually or do anything like but there was there was no trouble on the creek yeah. really. There was, there was some some time there was one time where we had some vandalism. Really. Vandalism. Um, but, linked to the strike. Yeah. Supposedly, but nobody. <laughs> we, we don't know. But it nobody knows. On uh, the uh, basis uh, of what? Don't know. I, I really. think somebody wrote an article in the works of Guardian who played with the club. Right. And I think they just did something on the ground to. Right. They poured all oil over the wicket, over the uh, square. Uh, That's what they did. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. So we have to repair it, don't we? Well, Pope's Pope brothers come and did Pope it, didn't they? Yeah. Chesterfield, they come and repaired square for us. Uh, the, that, the only thing for me personally is it is a bit uneasy for me because, well, I was a police officer at the time, and uh, you wasn't sure on whether I don't know, you was an inner feeling whether you'd be accepted the police were in a unique position then, perceived by many being you used by the government to do whatever. And so, you know, he was playing against, you know, people working in the colleges who were on strike. So it, it was a slightly uneasy time. For yeah, me. and with it, it affected, with, yes. it affected yeah. on the on the payment side, the mm. subs and, course, and different yeah. things. Like that because um, so there wasn't what there wasn't 22 players who worked at the colliery. It seems it was split. Uh, so mm. some players paid the full subs and some players was had them froze, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Had it frozen, it was deferred. So, yeah. uh, from a club point of view, that's what we tried to help the people who hadn't got yeah. so much money. I think we've so also done that for unemployed people and students, yes. haven't we? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the club has always so they keep playing. Keep, yeah. keep so playing with always yeah. been so uh, I mean, considerate even for that. Present day now, uh, we are one of the cheapest clubs yeah. in the league mm. for, as regards subs and yeah. membership. I think it's thirty-five pound for membership mm. for the year. Well, it's been absolutely fascinating, gents. I, I, I don't mean to patronise you, but I think you know we've talked about the history of the club and the direction it takes from every single local club. The one thing that comes across mm. loud and clear is that with people who volunteer, with people who've got the the, the, the good of the club at heart, there's a chance for, for us all, really. So mm. I thank you all for your contribution, and I wish Whit well, well mm. uh, going forward. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.